Welcome to the Professional Rule Breaker Podcast. Well, welcome back to the Professional Rule Breaker Show. I am your host, Kathy Walterhouse. And my guest today went from making $2 a day working in a factory to the boardrooms of Fortune 500 companies. He's the leading expert in the field of AI, and he's the founder and chief innovation officer of Tetra Noodle Technologies, which helps businesses grow faster, bigger, and easier with AI. And through Tetra Noodle, he has touched over 10 million lives and has generated in value over $500 million. This man seems like he does everything. He's got four patents and he also has a goal to help entrepreneurs break their own limits to reach the level they were meant to, which is just speaking my language. So I am so excited to have on the show today, Manuj Agarwal. Thank you so much. Excited to be here. Thanks. Yeah, I'm excited. There is so much that we can talk about, but I guess I just want to start a little bit talking about $2 a day. How do you go from $2 a day in a factory to where you are now? Well, I wish I had like a game plan when I was starting off. My ambition was just to sort of improve my life one bit at a time. Um, so the first first step was how can I pay for my basic education? The next step was, okay, how can I afford more than one pair of shoe off shoes in a year? You know, so these little steps were my aspirations. And those little steps, I think the, the only thing I will say is like, I tend to follow my heart, even though in the moment it doesn't make sense. And I just like to have fun. Okay. You know, what will be the most fun activity to do, which will get me closer to what I'm trying to do. And the other thing is I tend to think about, okay, how can I create an impact? Because any work that I do, if it helps other people as well, and lets me have fun, that's like a win-win for everyone. So when I started my career, you know, I was like, okay, how do I create value in the world? And I discovered my love for technology and computers and software. So I was like, okay, this is amazing. I, I'm, I am an extreme introvert. Like it may not sound like that now, but certainly I was not very good at interacting with humans. So that was another plus because, you know, I could just talk to the machines and, and tell them what to do and they never talked back. And then they did whatever <laughs> was needed to be done. So so all of that worked out. And then when I came to North America, I, you know, I discovered like how new startups are built, how new products are built, how large corporations work and all of these things. So it gave me so much, like so much diverse knowledge from different industries, different kind of companies. It, it be, just became like a more fun. And then when I discovered, okay, oh, I can write a, a program on my computer and that gets distributed to like, 10,000 businesses, and then they help a million other people. I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. I can just sit here and be lazy and have fun because for me, like technology is like a hobby, you know, have fun. And then it ends up creating this whole bunch of impact in the world. So those were some of the things that I noticed now looking back. But as I said, while going through it, you have no idea what, you know, what you're actually doing. Right, right. It's it's so funny that there's a couple of things that you said. First off, that you're an introvert mm -hmm. and that most people would never believe it. Mm -hmm. People say, I, I, I'm the exact same way. Mm -hmm. I'm an introvert too. And most people would never believe that I'm an introvert. And it, I guess it works to your advantage sometimes, right? Yeah. And then you also said, you brought up the word fun multiple times. And I always say, if it's not fun, why do it? Yeah. And I can just tell that technology is your passion. You said it's like a hobby to you. And with that, you're able to help so many. And now with AI, sounds like, I mean, you are the leading expert in AI. I saw in LinkedIn even that you're named number one, which is quite the accomplishment even in LinkedIn as well. 
not number one, but you know, it's like it's a. I think they gave out uh, these top badges. Top uh, voice, top, yes. Yeah, top voice. So, <laughs> um, I won't claim to be number one. Like there are many, many much smarter people than me. But I think one of the things I will say about that is like I've been fortunate enough to be in the circles of these top leaders, and with the way our world is, I I, I always say credibility is like a, a infectious disease you know you stand next to a credible person you become credible automatically so my my journey has been again you know collaborating with really 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 smart people and learning from them and then you know achieving these big accolades because i was in the company of these great people okay you and you brought up credibility which in the business world is big. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how did you start off getting that credibility? Because a lot of people, they, I, I get asked that question, you know, how can I build my credibility? Obviously, a lot of it is just go, putting yourself out there and, and getting interviews, doing whatever it is that you need to, making the context and relationships. But how did you do it? Hey there, you know, I am all about making a big difference. So I am so excited about announcing our podcast sponsor for today. They are the very last U.S. family-owned manufacturer of consumer goods products. And best of all, their products are healthier and safer for you and just really amazing quality. And you know, I can do all the things that I do if I really wasn't health conscious. So this is very near and dear to my heart because they are healthier and safer for you. And best of all, they will not break the bank. So if you're interested in finding out more information and switching your shopping to something that is non-toxic and healthier for you, go to switchaway.com forward slash rule breaker and one of my friends will reach out to you and just let's work all together to see if we can make an impact and switch to healthier and safer products and of course supporting small businesses so again drop your information at switchaway.com forward slash rule breaker i think you know a couple of things, right? Like one is first, in my opinion, credibility is directly proportional to what impact you have created in the world. You know, a lot of people are, they have this, I, I don't want to criticize any anybody, but they have this notion that if they are, you know, if they are wealthy, if they have these like degrees or, you know, they come from a certain part of the world, that's what credibility is. But in my opinion, it's more about, okay, how much have you done in your life which have impacted other people mm -hmm. truly? And then the next thing is how many people actually know about that impact? Because if you have done so much and nobody knows about you, again, it's, it's great, but you have no credibility. If you have not done anything and you keep making noise, again, it's actually going to backfire. It's actually not going to give you any credibility. So I think both of these things need to go hand in hand. You have to focus on creating impact and you have to focus on telling the world about that. And it's not like self-centered advertising, but it's again, just letting people know that, hey, this is what I'm capable of because it helps you to create even more impact, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Because the more that people know who you are and what you can do, the bigger your impact will be mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about AI, the really hot topic right now. <laughs> so I know my thoughts on AI. I love AI personally, but there's a lot of people that are afraid of AI. So where do you see AI going? in the future. Yeah. So let's talk about fear first, because I want to address this, right? And I will just go back in history. And I love history. I, I love various topics, anthropology and, and all of that. So even if I look at the discovery of wheel, I'm sure people did not just adopt it right away. 
and you you may have seen some cartoons where you know people are just sort of shoving this heavy load on wheels or sorry they're just dragging it and there's a person handing them a wheel and saying hey use this and they're like we are very busy right now we hard at work right now so they won't take the wheel and they are happy dragging their heavy load and then you go a few centuries ahead like discovery of paper not many people were comfortable with that this invention of the printing press you know there were riots there were revolutions the uh, printing press because knowledge is power and people who had access to knowledge they didn't want all the masses to have access to knowledge same thing with the steam engine so discovery or invention after invention it's no different than any other invention in the history whenever something ground breaking happens humans have a tendency to be afraid of the unknown because we want safety and security in what we are comfortable with and the idea is that that's a position to take for humans which is okay it's not a it's not a big deal but they those people put themselves at a disadvantage so i'll share a couple of examples in 1995 i logged into the internet for the first time and in 1998 i was applying for my first entry level job and if i did not have an email address and a word resume i was not able to apply for an entry level job and the world had changed in 3 years and then if we think about smartphone i, I think i bought my first iphone like 2007 or 7ish or 8 Mm -hmm. uh, and there were like maybe like 10 apps on it and i didn't really understood the idea first you know okay i said i've had phones and i've had like so called smartphones earlier as well which had a big like keyboard and everything right exactly uh, i remember those <laughs> yeah and then once you start understanding once the mass adoption started happening now we cannot imagine our life without uh, uh smartphones phones or internet it was the yeah, same exactly. thing everybody was exactly. really afraid of the internet exactly. when it first yeah, came Y2K, out yeah. y2k yeah. problem mm -hmm. happened so this uh, whole thing about ai being people being afraid is the same phenomena but the impact of ai is much much bigger it's more it's bigger than any other invention in history um again i'll share a few uh, more statistics just to drive the point home first AI is about to add about 10 trillion dollars in revenue to the world global economy in the next 6 years. Wow. So that, that means 10,000 billion dollars in revenue which means by the multiplication of business value it's about 100 trillion dollars of business value that is going to be added in 6 years. Right? So now that's that means more billionaires are going to be made on this planet. in the next 6 years than any time in history of mankind wow and then there are other statistics like in the next by the turn of this decade like 6 years again there are two, going to be two types of businesses one who are embracing ai fully and one who are out of business so right. there is no option here left and it's similar to saying that okay if i want to start a business you know in 1990s if i went to a business owner and i said hey do you need a website do you need a email address they'll be like you know i've got my white pages i got my yellow pages i think i'm all set <laughs> so so if you continue with that mindset today like how far do you think you will go right so the the idea here is that people really need to understand this is not not an optional technology anymore in fact it has been around for decades if you order something on amazon you are using ai if you use a smartphone you are using ai this interview is possible because ai is actually optimizing the audio and video behind the scenes now the idea is how do you take baby steps how do you take uh, you know get over your fear and misinformation and actually start adopting it and utilizing it and that that is an individual decision of course if they need help we you know experts like myself like the companies Uh, that help people get on with this technology they can reach out and and get help but the first decision is in their mind they have to decide whether they want to take that first step or not 
Right. So once they take that first step, they say, yes, I have to integrate AI into my business somehow. Any suggestions on the first few steps that they really should do? Yeah. See, in every business, 80% of the results are produced by 20% of the effort. And the rest of the 80% of the effort is the, is what I call the drudgery of work. Okay. So for example, we all are passionate about what we do. Like, let's say you are a physiotherapist. You're really passionate about helping people with their pain or helping fix their body. But then you have to learn about accounting. You have to learn about taxation. You have to learn about marketing. You have to learn about all this blah, 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 which is none of your passion, right. but that's the drudgery of work you need to do. So the first step is figure out where you are spending most of your time, which you don't have fun, where you don't have fun and where you are losing time and you are getting frustrated or you're losing money or whatever. Customers are complaining about that and apply technology there to delegate that stuff. Think of AI as a virtual employee, very smart, never gets tired, never takes a break and just continues to perform. So if you came across Harvard educated, Ivy League educated person who says, okay, I'll work for you for $25 a month and I will never take a break and I'll do exactly what you tell me to do. What will you assign them? Right. You know? uh, think That's of actually a really brilliant way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. and, and that in many cases is the cost or yeah. can be the cost, yeah. very low. And you're right. They're available 24 hours a day. Yeah. Never get, never gets tired, never gives any pushback yeah. and is always ready to work. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I also, yeah. and the fact that you can give things that you don't, that's not your passion, that maybe is not in your wheelhouse of what you're really good at. Because I, I find that when people spend time doing things that either they don't like, or they don't know how to do very well, it takes a lot longer too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so it mm -hmm. takes time away from like their zone of genius. Correct. Correct. Exactly. So they go ahead and they start with put, putting some AI into their business. The business starts growing, but I think they also always need to be looking or being educated on AI too, because AI is, ch I mean, even just in a few months, it's so rapidly changing. So how is it? And that's one of the things that people have said to me, because they're like, there's so many apps out there. I don't know which ones to use. I know for myself and our business, there are just a few things that we use. And I know there's a lot more out there. So how do you suggest people go about, I guess, always being educated in what's new? Yeah. This is a misnomer that people need to learn everything. I use, I try to use simple examples to explain it, right? So when people say, okay, what do I keep up with? Like, what tools do I use? It's like asking, okay, what home appliances do I keep up with? What home appliance should I use? Okay, what is my favorite home appliance? Are you wanting to toast a bread? Okay, then your favorite home appliance is a toaster. Are you wanting to cook some soup? Okay, you know, get some... A nice stove, stove. You know? yeah. <laughs> so not think about, okay, how much is happening out there? Think about what is it that you need and then focus on that. And that becomes, that makes your life much easier. And by the way, you can use AI to help you with that. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> you could do, what tool should I be using? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great idea. I had not thought of that. Oh, that's a really good idea, I would say. Mm -hmm. So, okay. One of the things that I love that I read about you is that you are all about helping entrepreneurs break through their own limits. I yeah. mean, that is just something that's near and dear to my heart. So yeah. tell me, how do you do that? Well, first of all, I realized that there are no limits in my own life. Like I, as I said, I still remember the days when I was, I used to sit on the factory floor and I was like, man, life cannot be this. It's gotta, it's gotta have more meaning to it. And how do these other people achieve so much? And once I realized being at this point and realizing, okay, it doesn't take that much 
it like we tend to think oh that person ha- went to harvard that's why they became so successful oh they had a big family rich family backing them that's why they became successful but i realize that none of that is true so we create our own boundaries around ourselves so that's the first step remove those boundaries secondly whatever that boundary now you set after removing that boundary multiply it with 10 and say okay that's my boundary now and then work backwards from there a lot of people i feel and this is one thing that i think for some reason my mind is wired differently i tend to think backwards rather than forwards i don't say okay i need to get a degree and then a job and then you know go ride the uh, corporate ladder i say okay i want my life to be like this and then what are the what is the second last step that i need to do and then what is the step before that and what is the step before that so i work tend to work backwards from my goal and since the goal is so far ahead it's like crazy goal like right now my my goal my mission in life is to help 20 people win the nobel prize oh wow that's fantastic <laughs> okay so so then when i think about that is like okay in my mind sounds crazy but let's see you know how wh- how can one go about doing that and work backwards from there and so when you do that interesting things happen because first of all you meet other crazy people and 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 then you start to combine their ideas with your ideas secondly if you again this is a cliche like if you shoot for the stars you end up at the moon you know which no, is i love that you, yeah. it's yeah exactly and <laughs> I love how you say you meet crazy people. Yeah. No, they're not crazy. Yeah. They just think outside the box. They yeah. go for it mm-hmm. and they go and they do it. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, I I love that. I we had a um, Nobel Peace Prize uh, winner on this show as oh, well wow. too, Lamine, who is just amazing. Absolutely amazing. So yes, I would love to see 20 more of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. and this is another thing you know there are so many people that don't even realize their own potential and that's why i i am passionate about this because i feel like if i am able to help 20 more of those how much impact they will make in in their lifetime you know that's going to be amazing yeah it's all about the impact i think mm-hmm. um i think if people reframe their way of thinking and instead of going like um you know i want all these things for myself and change it to how much impact can i make mm-hmm, mm-hmm. everything will change mm-hmm. i think when you have that thinking and you work that way on how much impact what's really interesting is one of the biggest impacts no you're making this giant impact on the world but you're also making this giant impact on yourself yeah, yeah. and your financial standings everything about it um as well exactly yeah i love that just making impacts so tell me about cuz i love your podcast name bootstrapping your dream sh- uh, show mm-hmm. and it's in the top 1% globally which is quite the accomplishment mm-hmm. so tell me about your show Yeah I mean again it's a story of my life right just building something that from the outside it sounds like impossible and just building it one step at a time with minimal resources that you have access to so it's and I come from this tech technology startup world where bootstrapping is a term used very frequently when people don't raise money and they go to invest there are t- typical ways of building startups technology startups is like you first come up with an idea go to investors beg them for money then they give you money and then start to build the technology but i have helped raise more than tens of millions of dollars for people but i found that people just money is a f- very funny thing when it comes in big numbers all of a sudden people don't know how to handle it mm. and they end up wasting too much of it so bootstrapping is where you say okay i'm going to just not go to investors i'm going to figure this out one step at a time and so my philosophy is bootstrapping is much better way to go and i've seen that work multiple times i've built businesses using bootstrap so that's the name of the show how do you bootstrap your dreams no matter how big and crazy they are yeah 
-hmm. and, and I love big and crazy dreams. I think people should go after their big and crazy dreams, yeah. figure out what it is and then go after it. Just like you, you yeah. want to help all, you know, these 10 or 20 Nobel Peace Prize winners. I mean, yeah. that's a huge dream, yeah, yeah. huge dream. Yeah. I actually, when you get there, cause I know you're going to get there. I want you to come back on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and and we'll talk about that because I, I love that. And I think if people would just get out of their own way yeah, and just go for it. And I love, I had never heard of it going backwards. That's actually the same way I think. I just had never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, find your, I wouldn't say necessarily your end point, but find whatever that big crazy dream is mm. and then start breaking it down into pieces. Yeah. yeah and exactly. then when you focus on that, all these things will start falling into place too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, I love that. So I know you're a rule breaker, but what really makes you a rule breaker? I mean, were you a rule breaker as a child? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was always in trouble. I always get in trouble even now. But but I think the rules are. I don't know. I have a funny thing. I mean, again, I, obviously, I don't recommend anybody do anything illegal. But right, it's not I, about when I say breaking the rules. Yeah, it's not about breaking laws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about thinking outside the box. Or yeah. the other example is like if you could think, you have a piece of paper in front of you, and you have a pen. Yeah. yeah. And people are saying, draw within the circle. So draw within the lines, yeah, and yeah. you go, no, I'm drawing all over here. Yeah. yeah. That's what rule breaking yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, uh, you know, as society, especially the industrial society has been built with a very structured point of view. And we are getting into a digital age where more and more the rules have to be broken. In fact, I believe many of the rules will be rewritten or thrown out the window in the next 10, 15, 20 years. Like, I believe in the next 10 years, a billion dollar companies will be run by one person. I believe. Wow, really? Yeah, I believe uh, driving by humans will be made illegal very soon. Um, so, you know. Wait, driving by humans? Oh, driving by, like, so, so, like with Elon Musk and his automation with the Tesla and all those, yes, will be illegal. Well, you know, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> I could see that. Yeah. And so, the rules, the more rules that contain you, that put boundaries around you, I will say, I encourage people to push those rules and bend those rules and see, okay, what happens if I bend a rule a little, you know? Because when you become comfortable with bending those rules, you figure out so many, so many loopholes in those rules because the people who make these rules I can guarantee 90% of the rules are basically self-serving rules so that mm. other people cannot, you know, figure out things. And so in my opinion, having this attitude of bending those rules, finding the loopholes opens up so many possibilities for people. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I think if you are out there bending or breaking the rules, the opportunity that's kind of like in between where where maybe before you couldn't see it i mean the opportunity has probably always been there yeah. but maybe you couldn't see it because you had those boundaries you had those rules you take those away you think outside the box you know what can i do different better whatever it could those things are there if you're willing to go out there and grab it the world there's that thing the world is your oyster yeah. <laughs> Exactly. There's so much out there, but that's so interesting. You said about a billion dollar company can be run by one person. Well, you know what? I want that one person to be you. And when you do that, I want you to come back to the show as well. I mean, it's funny, <laughs> like many people will actually run billion dollar company, not just me, but, and the thing about helping 20 people win the Nobel prize is along those lines, because think about it. Any big thing that you want to achieve is a result of how many able hardworking people you have around you. Yes. That's basically it. That's the secret of any success story, whether that's winning a Nobel Prize or winning running a large company. And people are finicky. People are the most important asset, but also people are the most difficult thing to deal with. 
but now if we can deploy virtual AI employees who can do sales, who can do marketing, who can do operations, who can do manufacturing, who can do all these things, then all you need is one person with a dream who can put these pieces together and then do whatever the hell they want to do. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be fun to see that happen, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, really fun to see that happen. So where can people find you? Um, you can go to my website, manujagarwal.com, my company website, tetranoodle.com, or you can find me on LinkedIn. And let me know you heard me on this podcast and how can I help? Absolutely. Well, we are going to have all of your contact information, Manuj, in the show notes. And we're definitely going to have to have you back. Uh -huh. I think there's a lot that we can talk about, but just a, a few little things that Manuj so eloquently said that, you know, what if there were no limits in your life? If you were able to get past the boundaries, what could you accomplish? And just think about it. What could you do to change the world? Because if you had like no boundaries in your life or no limits, I should say rather, you could create something brand new or improve something, or even if you just make a difference in like one person's life, you can really make a big difference because it's like a ripple effect. Yes. And you can just make a big difference in the world. So I really want to thank you, Manuj, for being on my podcast. You're really a lot of fun and a delight. And we'll definitely have to have you back. Thank and you so thank yes, you. absolutely. And for everyone that's out there listening, be sure to check out the links that we have in the show notes and contact Manuj when you have any type of questions, because I think he's a huge resource and I'm sure his company can help you with a lot as well. And if you enjoyed this podcast, don't forget, give us a five star. And until the next time, keep on, I'm going to actually change this a little bit, bending and maybe break in the rules in a lawful way, of course. So thanks again, everyone for joining in.